be a deafening silence around this. And if it wasn't for everyone online who kept pushing it, they'd have just let this go away. And I think that just proves how important it is that all of us keep going. Because otherwise, we never know what we're not going to hear of that they're not telling us. Now, the SBHG curriculum that's coming in is, in my opinion, one of the most dangerous ideas an Irish government has ever had. They can, they can use whatever political spin and manipulative wording they want. But the fact is, is that this gender nonsense is openly encouraging children to contemplate the idea of a sex change. Now, you can leave aside the fact that this is absolute madness for a minute. And who's going to profit here? Big Pharma is going to profit. And who's going to pick up the bill? You can be sure that they are not going to stop until under the title of trans healthcare, you're going to pick up the bill. And I don't think taxpayer money should be spent on mutilating children who aren't old enough to make the choice. And now another part of this, this curriculum is white privilege. White privilege. After, after centuries of invasion, oppression, genocide and, and occupation, they're going to call us privileged. And they, they, they will try to tell Irish people that they should feel some kind of guilt but based on the colour of their skin. And we're talking about children here, let's not forget that. This will be premeditated psychological abuse and demoralisation on an industrial scale targeting children. And like the hate speech laws, these are not Irish ideas. While our attention at the moment is on the SPHE curriculum, the RSE curriculum, which is the sex education curriculum, is equally as shocking. And it openly admits that it's... it's it openly admits that its intention is to fall in line with sex education guidelines from the World Health Organization and UNESCO. So that's not just globalism in politics, it's globalism in education. And it's not just in education, it's in sex education. Now, call me crazy, but I think that it, some things are still a parent's job. I think a parent's word still holds final authority on a lot of issues. And I believe Irish people are perfectly capable of deciding how we want to live and what we want to teach our children. We don't need all this unelected outside influence. It has to stop. I know when I was a child, someone protected me. And God willing, when I'm elderly, someone will protect me too. But right now, it's our responsibility to step forward when no one else will and protect childhood. And I use the word childhood because that's exactly what these policies will destroy. Life is hard enough for long enough as an adult. And childhood is an almost sacred, carefree period of life. And we can't allow extremists to defile that by making children contemplate sex changes and white privilege. This has to stop right now. And And the last thing I'd say, folks, is that just whatever they tell you the plans are, there will be more. This is only a foot in the door, and this curriculum will continue to add things and continue to be taught at a younger level until there's no coming back from it. So it's time for everyone right now to draw a firm line in the sand and let it be heard loud and clear that we will fight this for as long as it needs to be fought until it's done. Thank you, Tom. Yes. 
said hand in hand with words of ed agitator, hateful, bigoted, anti this, phobic, thus. So it must be wrong, right? It must be a bad thing. But if you look at the dictionary definition of far right, it means somebody whose political views are of the most conservative. Conservative means to have traditional values. So if that's what far right is, I'm happy to be it. Because if we look at the definition of the left is in 2023, we find words such as progressive, inclusive, all these kind of things. These seem to be the people that find it perfectly okay to show adult, explicit adult content to children. These seem to be the people who have no problem with gender ideology being taught as a fact in our schools. That's what left is. So if that's what left is, let's say we're far right. No problem. Now as they said, uh, I'm, I'm a member of the Natural Women's Council and we are actively affiliated with the Irish Parents Alliance, the Irish Education Alliance, Lawyers for Justice Ireland, and any human being who is willing to stand for the sanctity of upholding the rights of children. To stand to not corrupt children. Any human being, I don't care if you're political, apolitical, who you are, what your creed is, what your background is. If your primary objective is to keep children at the foremost, which is your responsibility as an adult human being, protecting children, nothing comes, nothing comes ahead of that. So I wanted to talk to you today about our country and it was founded on Bunrock the Heron, which is the highest law in this country. Make no mistake about that. No legislation that they bring in, no wishy-washy labels, nothing can be higher than Bunrock the Heron in this country. Bunrock the Heron itself was founded on natural law. It's derived from natural law. And if anyone's interested in reading about natural law, Mark Passio, if you want to go into his website, it's a great resource. Now, the rights that are written in Bunrock the Heron, the UC words like natural and alien and all these things, the Constitution doesn't give us these rights, doesn't gift us these rights. It's merely stating them for us because as human beings, we have these rights innately. We don't have to do anything to get them. We have them all the time, and we have all of them. We don't have to have some of them to forfeit others. That's not how it works, but that's what they'll have you believe right there, with how they're structuring things. Because if you look throughout the country, I'm going to give you a few examples of paraphrase what's going on here, right? The children in this country have a right to free primary education. We have a right to peacefully assemble. We have a right to express our opinions and beliefs. We have a right to religious freedom and to express our religious freedom without facing any discrimination. The mothers and fathers in this country are the primary educators of their children. That includes religion, that includes any of they have, that social, everything. Schools, not all of our schools are Christian schools, 
So they have their rights been impinged. But we have nowhere to send our kids now without forfeiting our rights. So we must stand up for this because having all the rights in the world means nothing if you're not willing to express them. And if you're not willing to stand for them and fight for them when you see that they're being impinged. Because these people want to create a false mass consensus that everyone's in agreement that this is the new truth. Well, they can have their new normal, but they're not going to impinge on my rights. And they're not going to impinge on my child's rights. So to talk about ways in which they're creating this falsehood, they're creating this idea that they can make our rights extinct, they can through under natural law, we've got mass marketing. We've got a saturation from every single angle, from celebrity endorsement to daytime TV, endorsement, social media influencer endorsing this ideology. You have every single mainstream journalist, propaganda peddler in this country singing from the same hymn sheet in lockstep, using the same words to describe us that seem bad, and using all the words that are good words to describe the left that seem good. It's not real. They did not consult the parents before bringing this in. What they did was they did a little and thing with a government NGO, an LGBT NGO, Hello, and about a thousand people, and they said that's the consultancy of the parents. It's not real. Sorry, I'm using my whole book. I didn't write a speech. Uh, now, another thing that they have for us in South Centre, they've got the hate speech legislation. They have this in other countries. Make no mistake, you don't have to do it because it is nonsense. As I said, the highest law in this country is Bull Rock and the Heron. That's the highest law. So by bringing in all the legislation, hate speech legislation they want, it does not nullify our constitutional rights or innate human rights. It doesn't nullify it. So if I've been taken to court on hate speech, because I said there are two sexes, a judge would then have to rule again and say, you don't have any religious rights. You don't have any religious expression. Because the first page of my doctrine says, and I'm paraphrasing, that there are only two sexes. A judge would have to rule, you don't have a right to freedom of expression. No judge is going to rule this. The only reason that this hate speech legislation is being put forward is to incite fear so that you will self-censor yourself. That's the only reason, that's the only purpose. Do not let them self-censor yourself. Don't whisper your opinions. Say them out loud now more than ever is when you need to express them. Don't use your human rights, there is no point in having them. They're already creating this ma false mass consensus. So if we keep going, they're going to create an illusion that our human rights are extinct. Don't let them do that. So in the nature of practicing what I preach, I'm also going to explain something about myself at the end here. But I'm going to say, first of all, that you have options, and this is one of the ways that you can exercise them. Go on to the Parents' Rights Alliance website and download the opt-out letter. Fill it in and give it to your child's principal, your child's school principal, to opt your children out. That is essentially exercising your rights as a primary educator and your religious rights, and that's what it falls under, and your freedom of expression by telling the principal that you do not consent to them teaching this gender ideology to your child. Yes. And therefore, it is illegal and unconstitutional for them to go ahead and do it anyway.
my truth is what it is, my beliefs are what they are, and no words you say can take them. So stick your head up out of the trenches and send this opt out letter PDF and the leaflet information what's in the school system to every parent group that you're on. Sports groups, school parents groups, send it to everyone. Now you might get called homophobic. <laughs> send it out there because it only works if the majority parents are doing this. The majority of people are opting out. And then additionally, you have a board of management letter where the principals themselves can opt out their entire school out of this curriculum. But now, as I say, two, over 200,000 leaflets nationwide, we have seen the principals. Some of them are far left. Some of them are cowards. Because that's all we have at the moment. That's all we have. There is no gray in this. You're either fighting for children or you're enabling the destruction. There's no gray anymore. No fear, no 
nothing here because I am a Christian and that's what that means. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And I have the right to stand here and say that and it doesn't impinge on anyone else's beliefs. How could it? So I'm going to finish by saying this and you can feel free to join me if you so choose, such is your free will. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever.